Hello everybody, Andrea Trosky here with Dental L Tutoring. If you haven't seen my other um, videos yet where I'm going through some mock exam questions, I had mentioned, sorry about the mess, we are packing, we are moving, so things are a little bit crazy at the moment. But yeah, so in the video today, I would like to go through some more mock exam questions because all of you are saying how much you love them, which is awesome. And even as a tutor, I noticed that students seem to like the session more and they learn a lot more if we go through mock exam types of questions because then they can see kind of what they need to focus on and what they may have studied enough so then they can move on to something else because I've been a tutor now for about 13 years so I tutor dental hygiene and dental um, assisting students online and I love it I do still work in a dental office a week or two or I'm um, sorry a day or two a week at the most but that's it I pretty much tutor full-time because this is what I love to do and I've helped hundreds upon hundreds of students pass the board exam, so I'm so happy to say that. So if you are looking for a board exam prep course, I do have, have something like that because it is all online. It is called um, the Board Exam Prep Academy, so I will leave the link underneath, so feel free to have a look. But today, you will all get something for free, and these are some mock exam type questions, so let's talk about them. So let me just open up my screen here, everybody, to show you guys the PowerPoint that I have today. Um, because what I do in the full um, board exam prep course is, is we go through mock exam questions. I see my students live um, usually about two Sundays a month. Um, sometimes it's more depending on holidays. And we have a private um, Facebook page also where I, I upload things every day pretty much like mock exam questions. I do ask them questions, um, lectures, modules, everything. And when you sign up, you have full access to everything right away um, inside. So you can study as quickly or as slowly as you want. You have all of the modules, all the mock exams, all of the lectures, everything. So it, it would take you time, but I want you to learn everything that you have to know. So it's a large course, but that's why I give um, everybody full access until they pass the exam. And those um, students who sign up while they are still in their program, they have also full access until they pass the exam. So that's awesome, right? So you don't have to worry about having to rush, 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 or watch this as quickly as possible. Take your time because that makes things less stressful. But today, let's talk about some questions here. So um, I am going to talk about some perio type questions. So this is a very common topic, of course, for dental hygiene students and dental assisting students. So let's talk about it. So let's go through the first question here. Oh no, I thought my computer was frozen for a second, but it's not. Okay, so what terms are used to describe the severity of periodontal disease? This may seem simple for you, but you'd be surprised how many students get this wrong. So that's why I want to talk about it here. So A, B, C, or D, what do you guys think? And if you're not sure about the answer, feel free to stop the video and then replay it again as soon as you have an idea, because I do talk about the answers as well. So what do you guys think? And you, you have hopefully seen the other mock exam um, videos that I have where I talk about covering up the answers. So read the question and then cover up the answer and then try to answer it in your mind first and then uncover the answers and try to answer them that way. Because if you go through all of the answers first, then you might get confused a lot easier. Because all of these sound correct, don't they? They all make sense, but one of the answers is the most correct. So let's talk about it. C is the right answer. So slight, Moderate and severe talks about the severity. We're not talking about the type, we're talking about the severity. So there is a difference. So you do have to know what that means. So when we're talking specifically about periodontal disease, the severity, so light, moderate, or and severe. So slight, or some textbooks call it early, so it depends on what textbook you're reading. So slight or early is your four millimeter pockets. Your moderate is considered your five millimeter pockets, depending on the textbook, because some textbooks say that moderate is five to six millimeters. So look at the textbook and look at the notes that you have, but from what I know, moderate is five millimeters. So slight is four, Moderate is five and severe or heavy sometimes, depending on the textbook, 
is six millimeters or more. In some textbooks, it's seven millimeters or more. So you do have to know that. Okay, next one. So a diet low in important nutrients can compromise the body's immune system. So this is a fairly simple question, but I put this in here so that I wouldn't forget to talk about it because um, this is more for your nutrition unit. But when you're talking about um, periodontal disease, nutrition can play a role. So that's just kind of why I like to throw this in here. This is kind of a simple one. So yes, it is true. So a diet here, I'll just kind of move my image here. So a diet low in important nutrients can compromise the body's immune system and make it harder for the body to fight off infection. And that's what's happening when you have um, um, periodontal disease. It's infected, things are infected, it's not good. So it begins as an infection and if the person, if the patient isn't getting the proper nutrients that isn't helping it and it can make it worse. So that's why I kind of threw that in there. Okay, this may seem like a simple question guys, but it's not, people get it wrong. So attached gingiva is, A, is it loose? Is it B, firmly attached? Is it C, blue or purple? Or D, where you probe? So what do you guys think? It's firmly attached. I put this in here because attached gingiva, even though yes, it kind of gives it away in the answer, but not always the case. So if you're looking at a question, or um, I should say it's giving it away in the question for the answer. But that's not always the case. So even if you didn't know the answer and you're saying attached gingiva, well, that seems pretty obvious. It's firmly attached, attached gingiva. Um, in this case, yes, it was pretty obvious. So that was nice, right? Um, yeah, that was kind of a simple one, guys. Um, I kind of feel like this is a simple one too. So these are more simple. Typically, my mock exams are very, very hard, but this is one of my first units. So I like to ease students in a little bit. So looking on the mandible, free gingiva is to the attached gingiva. So you have to know where the free gingiva is and the attached gingiva. So this is kind of like an anatomy lesson. So is the free gingiva, is it apical, coronal, deep, or superficial to the attached? So think about that for a second. And I do have an image to show you guys. The answer is B, coronal. So you look at the free gingiva up here and you're attached. So your free gingiva is where you probe. And that's how I like to explain it to students because even if you look inside the mouth or even here, you might be going, okay, I see the tooth. I see that the free gingiva is always above the attached gingiva, but where is it specifically in the mouth? So think of where you probe. So it's that spot where the sulcus meets, but the attached gingiva is kind of the whole thing and that's firmly attached to the teeth. Um, I have a little image here too, which I felt might help a little bit easier. So your free gingiva is always up against the tooth. Does everybody see kind of where my mouse is? I know it's probably hard to see, I'm sorry. But um, the free gingiva is around the tooth. The attached gingiva is all of this stuff here. So think of that attached gingiva is covering your bone, so to speak. Okay, so think about that. Your free gingiva is, you know, easily damaged, I guess, but I guess so is the attached gingiva. But the free gingiva is around the tooth and that's where you probe. So does that make a little more sense? Um, a lot of students get that question wrong. So that's why I'm talking about it here. But so, so if you did get this question wrong and you need more help, just let me know. Okay, let's go through one more. So um, in the scope of practice, what does this mean for the RDH? So for the dental hygienist. And assistants have to know these types of questions too. So A, the dental hygienist must perform within her scope of practice. B, the dental hygienist must have the dentist in the office to perform work. C, the dental hygienist must follow the CDHA and CDHO guidelines. Or D, the dental hygienist must be ethical. Now this question, if you're, if you're taking your test in America, in the US, whatever, you don't have to know this. This is for my Canadian um, students. I teach students all over and there are questions where I will say, this is for American only and this is for Canadian only. So I do teach all over the place, but this isn't for, for um, Americans. So you can just forget this if you're in um, the US right now. So what do you guys think? <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water, but I think it's downstairs. 
What do you guys think? So talking about the scope of practice. It is A. So a dental hygienist must always perform within her scope of practice. And this is why this isn't a question for Americans, because you're able to do a lot more than we are here in Canada. Um, even for dental assistants, if you're in the U.S., you can do a lot more than the dental assistants can do in Canada. So that's why this, this question wouldn't apply to everybody. Um, okay, this is a good one. What does L-A-D-L, or is it I-A-D-L stand for? Yes, yeah, sorry guys. Um, what does I-A-D-L stand for? So this is in your nutritional section. This is for Canadians and Americans. You guys have to know this one. So is it A, instrumental activities of daily living? B, basic tasks needed for self-care? C, used to measure seniors' ability? Or D, instruments always delayed in living? So what does that stand for? And this was actually on the last exam. So that's why I'm asking about it. What do you guys think? It stands for instrumental activities of daily living. So I have a little side note here. So ADLs stands for activities for daily living. Um, talking about your, your simple needs. So IADL is something more complex to function. So your, your simple needs would be being able to use the washroom, being able to shower, being able to brush your teeth, where a complex tax would just be something more complex. So you do have the different levels. Um, okay, we'll go through one more. Okay, what is a statement of a problem? So this is talking about your dental hygiene statement. So dental assistants don't have to know this, and Americans, you won't really have to know this either. So what is a statement of a problem? So this is my Canadians here, okay? So this is something that you guys have to know. What do you guys think? So it is a diagnosis. And again, this is for my Canadians here, so you wouldn't have to know this otherwise. But so a statement of a problem is looking at the diagnosis. So you do the assessments, you look through everything, but then you have to determine, okay, what does this patient have? So that's just what that means. So that's kind of a Canadian question too. But okay guys, so I like to keep the video short and sweet here. I hope that helped with some mock exam questions. I have lots of different mock exam topics on YouTube. So feel free to do a search and you will find some more. If you need help with your exam, let me know. If you're a student still in school and need anything, need help, have questions, please let me know. I am so happy to help. And I'll see you guys in the next video.